It's the question that everyone wants an answer to. What is the secret to extraordinary success? Is it grit? Is it determination? Luck? Or is it who you know? I've been in business now for some 30 years, and I can tell you, all successful entrepreneurs share a few unique qualities. Certain traits that give them the upper hand. But what are they, and can they be learnt? I'm on a mission to find out what drives Britain's best entrepreneurs. This is it? Yeah, this is it. But I don't like something not being as good as it can be. Would you die for your brand? I almost did and uncover the human side that determines their success or failure. We're driven by self-doubt. Maybe it was all that bullying and heartache. I want them to reveal their individual recipes for success. You definitely are a hippie with a calculator. <laughs> you are quite manipulative. So I can discover just how they made their millions. If these guys ever sold this business to me, you guys wouldn't know what hit you. Mess with me, I'm going to turn you to stone. Will you take a £100 million cheque for your share now? Mm. Success in business isn't a fine science. I've turned tiny startups into multi-million pound companies. Not all of my ventures have succeeded. Business is tough. But I've always believed there are certain factors that can give us all a fighting chance. I'm on a journey to get inside the minds of two of the country's top business people, and I'm hoping to discover the ways in which the most unlikely characters become multi-millionaires. I'll be spending time with Richard Reed, founder of a smoothie company with a £165 million turnover. And Michelle Moan, the self-made inspiration behind a multi-million pound lingerie business and who, according to the Rich List, is worth £50 million. Pounds. Have they both followed the same blueprint to success or is it their difference that matters most? My journey begins at Fruit Towers in West London, the home of the most successful smoothie company in the UK and its co-founder, Richard Reed. Another tie's off Bro, today. Look at that, the tie's no off. Tie, no tie. <laughs> How are you? Good to see Good. you. How's well? it going? Very Have good. you seen the difference to the way that you travel? Yeah, but I must We're admit... We're grass-covered vans and you're this thing. I want to be in the grass-covered van. Yeah? That's it's good fun, actually. It dances, it's got hydraulics, so it bounces around and you can blare out music for those speakers at the front. We take it to festivals, go out sampling with it. And a lot of my people have met their partners through it as well. <laughs> Richard is leading a new wave of entrepreneurs who have embraced a business style pioneered in the US by companies like Google. He believes that if his employees feel at home, they'll be extra productive. And despite opting for an open collar, I still felt overdressed. It almost doesn't look like a working environment, though. It looks like, like, a, like a London place centre. <laughs> <style. laughs> what kind of it? The most important thing is, first of all, have a smoothie. Wow. Anyway, so this is the sort of the chill-out area. It's basically a big um, communal area for What's people to come in for informal meetings. What's that? Oh, well, we call this thing the smoothie wheel of fortune, so sometimes if we can't make a decision, we'll put all the different options on here and then spin it and let the, the smoothie wheel of fortune decide so for put, us. you put your ideas in here? Yeah, and, and spin whichever it. one it turns to is the exactly, one you choose. Exactly, that's what you go for. You make big decisions on a wheel of fortune. <laughs> Not for like big decisions, but for when you've got a few different options and a bit of fun. So you've got, it's got sort of like a home feel, like it's, the, it's your kitchen. Yeah. And then you've got people... More sitting rooms. Mm. You let people wear whatever they want to wear. Yeah, no, and that's the point. If you want to wear a suit, you're extremely welcome to wear a suit. But you'd look a we bit... Don't, you'd we don't tell bit, people... You'd look a bit like me now, wouldn't you? I, I feel now as if I've come into a business environment for the first time and I'm completely out of place. Well, I, I have to say... I'd probably come in tomorrow well, no, with because you're, We would never something. judge. We would never judge someone on what they wore. That's just... We're not, it's not that type of vibe. You've got to wear what you're most comfortable with so you can do your best work. I've literally seen one person sat at his desk in his dressing gown. Now, even that was slightly pushing the sort of the limits of what you can wear around the office. <laughs> in his dressing gown. <laughs> in his dressing gown. He said he was cold. Yeah. 
<laughs> After reading geography at Cambridge, Richard set up the Fruit Juice Company in 1999 with fellow graduates John Wright and Adam Ballon. We have a little house phrase which is if you're 70% sure then go for it. Don't wait around trying to be 100% confident it's the right decision. I've had the, the very rare privilege, I think, to have spent the last 12 years doing something that I've found to be incredibly exciting and interesting and mind-expanding and life-enhancing and doing it with my two closest friends. So who wants to go and make some smoothies? Yeah! <laughs> Today, Richard sells over two million bottles of smoothies a week, but they're expanding their range, moving into ready meals and taking on the giants of the orange juice market. It's about being natural natural ingredients, making natural food, but also the, the, the idea of being natural, talking naturally, acting naturally. <laughs> People can come in that work at Innocent, be their natural selves at work each day. Kimberly is joining us as our new purchase ledger specialist. She can make the sound of a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> we won't hide behind some sort of weird corporate facade, we'll just be who we are. It's always good to be exactly who you are, as long as you realise that running a business is about making money. And I wanted to find out if Richard had the money-making gene. When did you actually feel or think to yourself, you know what, I'm an entrepreneur? Uh, it was, I was 16 and I was working in a dog biscuit factory in Huddersfield and my job paid £2 an hour and... The task I was assigned to get down on my hands and knees and pick up the dog biscuits off the factory floor that had fallen off the conveyor belt. So I went up to the foreman and said, do you have a brush I could borrow? That you had a brush I could borrow, I could do this job better. And he just looked at me dead in the eyes and said, son, you are the brush. And I thought that, that was the split second I decided, you know what, there has got to be a better way than this. So I, I left the dog biscuit factory that afternoon, went home and set up a little business called Two Men Went to Mow, which was just mowing lawns in the village where I grew up. And before I knew it, I'm billing myself out at £2.50 an hour and getting so much work that I could actually give jobs to my mates. I billed them out at £2.50 an hour, paid them 2 25 an hour, so made a little bit extra there. If you don't like the situation, then go about changing it rather than complaining about it. Having the confidence to change what you don't like is an entrepreneurial trait I recognise. But was this Cambridge graduate helped by having a privileged upbringing? I'm from Huddersfield in the, in the north of England. Um, my dad started as a bus conductor and worked his way up um, to become like a manager in the local bus company. And my mum was a nurse. My mum and dad decided they wanted to sort of pay me to go for a private education. That was funded by my mum going out and working nights, so she'd work two nights a week. My parents made massive sacrifices for us as kids. What was your school life like? First year, I came 44th out of 45 in my class in the exams, right? So one from the bottom. You know, I think something clicked with me, and I worked hard the next year. I remember I came 17th, and I remember going home to sort of say, you know, really please myself, I came 17th. And my mum just said, I, I think you can do better than that. And I remember thinking, Wow. So you think from that one defining moment, that was the self-belief injection that your mum gave you? I think it made, me, I think it made me recalibrate, yeah. I think it made me think, oh, yeah, that felt pretty good. But then it was like, well, actually, you, you can know. do better. Yeah, you can do better. You can do better. And you did. And yeah. It, and almost the rest is history. Yeah. To truly uncover why Richard has become so successful, I needed the answers to some uncomfortable business questions. But that would have to wait. First, I've got an appointment with an entrepreneur who is poles apart from Richard Reed. The next stop on my journey is East Kilbride, where I'm meeting Michelle Moan, the tycoon behind one of the country's leading lingerie labels. I wonder what her corporate headquarters might reveal about her particular approach to business. Hello. Michelle, hello, how, how, are, how you? are you? Fine, how are you? Very good. Nice to see you. Wow, thank you very much Welcome. for Welcome. This is our Scottish headquarters and we've got Hong Kong and we've got China as well. Um, I wanted a, it shaped like a breast, so you're now in the breast of the building. And when we go upstairs you'll see it more. And you're, you're not honestly, you're not winding me up. This is no, honestly, real. I, it's real, yeah, and it's kind of shaped like a double D. So there you go. <laughs> so 
So this is the roast. Yep. This looks far too staged for me. You can't be all tidy workers. This is how we run things. And if you look any any cupboards that you want to look in, they will all be organised. 